Hi, sophomores, Dr. Neeby here. Today, we're gonna talk about personal narrative. And importantly, we're gonna check to make sure that you have a story in the personal narratives that you are writing. A common trap of drafting personal narratives is staying at that reflection or exposition level instead of really digging in and writing a story. So let's review. What does it mean to write a story? Stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And I bet you've probably seen this image before. It's called Freitag's Pyramid, and we usually use it to help us as readers to understand the parts of a story. We talk about the exposition, the rising action, the climax, the falling action, and the resolution. But today I'm going to ask you to look at it from a different angle. Let's think like a writer. Same pyramid, but instead, let's think about what you have to accomplish as a writer in each part. So instead of talking about exposition, we're going to talk about the function of exposition. And we're going to call this the shaky ground situation. I want you thinking about what occurs before the main action at the beginning of the story. And what's shaky about it? There's got to be something that's a problem at the beginning of the story, something that's unsettled or worrisome, some reason for us to actually have a story. A good ground situation is one that is voltaged or full of electricity and tension and dissatisfaction. Your ground situation always involves a character who wants something. Guess what? That character is you. What's your character desire? What do you want? And what gets in the way of you getting what you want? What growth or change needs to take place for you and what needs to get resolved? All of that belongs in your shaky ground situation. Then climbing up the pyramid, we have a series of small conflicts that create rising tension. Like, let's say you keep getting in little fights with your brother every single day until one day you get so upset that you slam the door on his hand and cut off the tip of his finger. Boom, you have a crisis. The crisis is a turning point, a catharsis. It's the emotional high point, or probably more specifically, it's often the emotional low point, the abyss or a deep struggle. It's the moment when things can't get any more intense. It's also the moment of change, the moment that gets you out of the rising tension. Things can't build anymore, and the characters, that's you, have had it. From there, we tip back down the scale into the falling action and take small steps toward the ending. Things start to get resolved. They start falling into place or potentially falling apart. You don't just have the crisis and then quick cut to a final conclusion where you tell us what you've learned. Instead, things happen after the crisis that lead you to the new place or give you the new insight that you need. Remember, resolution doesn't have to be neat and tidy because human beings aren't neat and tidy. We're complex. So the falling action is naturally also complex. And then finally, we have the ending or what Freitag calls the resolution. You're going to think about what's changed for you. What's different at the end? What needs resolution? What's done and what's still undone? The ending might just be a resting place without a real sense of moving on. That's okay. Or it might be a moment where the narrator moves forward in a new way with a new question in mind. Put this closing moment in the context of your life today. You're still alive, so your story is still evolving. You don't have to have everything all buttoned down by that last sentence. So this might feel like a lot, but I want you to remember you've seen this a few times already this year. We talk about how Douglas constructs the Aunt Hester scene. We've seen this full plot pyramid. If that feels a little too distant or, you know, modeling your own writing after a slave narrative feels like a bit of a leap, think about all the essays that you read over the summer in American Like Me. Those are all examples of personal narrative that follow this same arc, telling a story. So let's do a quick review. A story means that something happens. The king died, and then the queen died. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. A plot means something happens for a reason. The king died, and then the queen died of grief. There's a because or a why. 
Ideally, your job is to write for a reason. But at the very least, you have to tell a story, and that means you need a beginning, a middle, and an end. Your task is to make sure that you have a story and hopefully a plot. And you can do that in one of a few ways. You could easily go back into what you've written, take this diagram, and map out your own story to see what you have and what's missing. Good luck. Happy writing. Your teachers are only an email, a Zoom, or an office hours visit away, and we can't wait to see what stories unfold and what stories you have to tell us.